If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the Filthy Capitalist option. It's sorry, it says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times, and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at insory at gmail.com, and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon, and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive you review. A positive review. <laughs> get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is a community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in a Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Finn and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch indeed. A child shall lead them. To buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear that listener. That means buy merch. Yes, dear listener. You know, like, when you get a phrase over and over, you, like, forget even what it means. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> That's we've been true. saying it, people are like, they just lock it out. <laughs> <laughs> a follow right, you through guys. on the command. Yeah. <laughs> you guys, this is a Finnish birthday stream. Yes, sir. Read if you look, uh, I actually did my own personal research and figured out those are the colors of their flag. So there they are for you guys. Happy birthday. There's a little tiny flag. <laughs> In 2018, we, two Finnish guys, Strangers to each other got interested in your channel and joined a community called The Village. That's right. Facebook.com <laughs> backslash Vin and Sorry, I think. There we joined one of the alliances called the Epic Underground. Now, five years later, we both decided to celebrate our birthdays with a joint stream. As it turned out, we were both born no on the king. 8th of November. What? Gang shit. Okay. As oh, the that's, of right. elections, that's why they picked to do it tonight because it was going to go into their birthdays. Sadakt. <laughs> Sadakt. That's so special. You guys are sharing it with us. That's so cool. We're both born on 8th of November. What are the odds, dear listener? As a the theme of our selection, we decided to make a sequel to Kai's stream last year, which had songs in Finnish. Here's Kai's comment <clears throat> For this stream, I wanted to try something different and break from the metal genre a bit and let you experience the different side of Finnish music. I hope you'll enjoy what I picked for you Ooh. this time. All right. That good. is the big homie Kai. Good. All right, here we go. Here's Kai's pick. It's Gene Sibelius Finlandia is the name of the song. Finlandia, Opus 26, is a tone poem composed by Gene Sibelius in the autumn of 1899. The piece was composed for the press celebration of 1899 a covert protest against increasing censorship from the Russian Empire and was the last of seven pieces performed as an accompaniment to a tableau depicting episodes from Finnish history. The celebrations were a contribution towards the resistance to the efforts to increase Russian influence in the then autonomous Grand Duchy of Finland. The premiere was on the 2nd of July, 1900 in Helsinki. Helsinki. Most of the piece is taken up with rousing and turbulent music evoking the national struggle of the Finnish people. Towards the end, a calm comes over the orchestra and the serene and melodic Finland's hymn is heard. Finlandia hymn is heard. Finlandia became a symbol of Finnish nationalism. While Finland was still a grand duchy under Russian performances within the empire had to take place under the, under the covert title of impromptu. Ah. Go ahead. After the Russian aggression against Finland in 1939, the Winter War, the Finnish poet V.A. Koskinemi supplied a new text, the one that has been used ever since. Sibelius so. arranged the hymn for a mixed choir as late as 1948. Mm. 
Finlandia is not our national anthem, although it has been repeatedly suggested to be the official national anthem of Finland. Today, during modern performances of full-length Finlandia, a choir is sometimes involved, singing the Finnish lyrics with the hymn section. Okay, guys, there All you right. go. Let's check it out. There we go. Finlandia by, by Gene Sibelius, the Polytech Mill Choir, and the Helsinki, Helsinki Philharmonic, dear Let's listener. Let's check it out. Let's check it out.
just about to say that's a national anthem of <laughs> Finland, but it's not. <laughs> it's, right? not. it's not. I guess it's been voted upon, but it hasn't been chosen. Although I do think if you were to have a, do they have baseball in Finland? That would be a uh, long anthem before the game. I don't think they have baseball in Finland. Or I mean, whatever it might. is. You know, whenever they do the national anthem, it, it's like nine minutes. That's yeah. like a long time. <laughs> Keep the kids quiet and everybody. If you do the same thing we do here. Bravo! You know, bravo! I did think that there was like sections of it that sounded like super proud. Like, oh, yeah. and I was like, okay, They're right there. Very triumphant. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then there were there were other parts of it that found, sounded like you were watching like the end credits of one of those kind of like epic films from well from when i was a kid but that probably means that it was like even 20 years before that because we were a little behind the times yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. you know what i'm talking about no 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 yeah it was that, like the that, mgm <laughs> yeah you know yeah. mgm that whatever really you know, the yeah. are coming up. they always made like these big yeah whatever type big, of things yeah um um You know what? If you're gonna do a gluten free one, try a cauliflower one. What the cauliflower you, crust is actually. What really did you good. make today in the pressure cooker? It it's really nice. It's Jamaican brown stew. Oh, and it doesn't okay. have dumplings, and we don't have rice, and ah. it's, it's just a lot of like. <laughs> there was a bunch of flour that fell to the ground. Yeah, it's just I didn't have time to make oh, anything okay. more than what I did. Yeah. Oh, Finland! Behold, it the day shall come. Later. The threat of night has now been banished, and the lark of the morning is singing in the lark's a bird, right? Yeah, it's singing in the brightness. I'm pretty sure the song of a lark is actually really beautiful too. As if the firmament, firmament itself was singing. Mm. Oh, that's pretty. The lightness of the morning shall defeat the powers of the night. That day shall come, O birth land. Yeah, oh. that reminded me of the verse that says, like, um, joy comes in the morning. Like, sorrow may last for the night, but joy comes in the morning. Yeah. Oh, rise, Finland, rise, raise high thy head that has been wreathed with great memories. Oh, rise, <laughs> Finland, thou show to the world that thou banished slavery, and that thou did not yield under oppression. Thy morning has begun, Birthland. So, they, they banished, I thought that was interesting. Well, they were that dealing with the, the Russians, right? You know, oh, it's kinda, right. They were the big bad guy, uh, the last generation. Yeah. Um. You know, they, Finland's a pretty small country. But remember, after the Russian aggression against Finland in 1939, called the Winter War, the Finnish poet V.A. Koskin, uh, Koskinemi supplied a new text, the one that has been used ever since. So this was in direct response to, you know, Russian aggression, oppression, okay. uh, you know, that type of thing. Do they mean Slavs or literal slaves? Uh, I think when they said Finland banished slavery, I think it was probably speaking metaphorically of, you know, anytime a country oppresses another country, it's a form of slavery to a degree because they're charging them tribute and all the rest of it. So I don't know if they were talking about that, but, you know, it's... This happened a lot after 9-11, where there was this deep feeling of nationalism. Yes. And I didn't. It was amazing. It was. I, I tell my son, because, you know, Dory, everybody knows where Dory is. He would have loved that. Oh, my oh gosh. Oh, my God. He would have loved. He, he would have loved that. I never thought, like, how much. Yeah, you're oh, right. Man. He would have freaking loved, loved that it. shit. He wow. He would have he he also signed up and gotten deployed for sure. So I'm very, very glad that. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Yeah, he was. Yeah, he would have. He been, would have. He would have been beside himself if he would have seen that. Um, oh my gosh! But like, <laughs> oh Richard. <laughs> well, the issue is, is that like our enemies weren't right next to us. You know, they had to do this complex operation with I this plane. I took mine to bed two nights ago. <laughs> it's like you're 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 sharing the same continent with these people, with these Russian people. Yeah. You know, and it, it, that's something that we can't really relate to as Americans because all the contiguous United States and all of our contiguous neighbors, uh, you know, it's like, Vaughn, you better tuck your chain. And he said, don't nobody want to die. Ain't nobody that silly. So like as Americans, we don't, we don't understand like being landlocked with a person, with a, with a country that could just 
drive over and try to fuck you up. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. we don't understand what that's like. Um, so it's a crazy thing to like stand up against. It must be a crazy thing to stand up against a power like that. Um, yeah, we did have a civil war for sure. But it's a crazy thing to like stand up to a power like that and, you know, do what you need to do. But yeah, I didn't really get this idea that nationalism had a negative connotation until like almost like till we started the channel, really. Um, and maybe it wasn't, I wasn't, it was, I wasn't listening, um, to, to people, but man what, what? wait you always saw nationalism as a good thing and you didn't see oh, how it yeah. be a bad thing yeah and then what about the channel change that well it was a well really it was talking to like european yeah uh the european members of the group and they were like yo nationalism what are you talking about led to the holocaust blah blah blah, 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 blah. what you know what i'm saying like oh. so i i did i didn't put it together because yeah. like it was just such a our mindset, in my view, was just like so different from that from that mindset. You know, like we were attacked. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, and of course, at the time, I didn't understand. Like, yeah, that's because you guys are a bunch of bullies, and 9/11 was somebody punching you in the mouth. But it's like America loves the underdog story, but we're generally not the underdog. So that's that's one of the things that was really like fascinating to me. I'm listening to this. I'm like, yo, these guys. I always think to myself, like. Because everybody feels like they would do X, Y, or Z if this situation happened. But seriously, if you were a small country and you had to go up against the biggest bully on the block, like, how many people would show up? How many people would get busy? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I'm not sure. You know, yeah. like... Yeah, exactly. Situation happened, like, a week ago. Like, you would figure, you the know... The active shooter that we had in our town. Yeah, like, I don't know. Like, so... I, I we're from I, Lewiston, Maine. I started like struggling with that, like, oh, okay, so nationalism. Yeah, you know, I talked to Peter, and he'd be like, you know, what do you like this? Okay, so your country's better than other countries. Blah blah blah. I'm like, well, yeah, the Olympics. Like, you're cheering for your. See, I'm I'm so. In surprised. the Olympics, you're cheering for your country, right? Yeah. Okay, that's but, that's isn't that a form of nationalism? But I remember when we used to talk about missionaries and like going over there and like civilizing the natives, and you would say. Like that's American nationalism to go I'd over there and think I'd that I'd everything... say that's ethnocentrism. It's different than nationalism. Oh. Ethnocentrism is where you center your ethnicity and the markers of your ethnicity as being like the standard. So, okay, and the nationalism is what? Nationalism. Your well the religion? negative the negative connotation in nationalism is my country is better than everybody and you know, we get to destroy everybody and anybody that crosses over will destroy them and you know, that type of thing. You know, kind of like a Nazi, oh, okay. Okay. a Nazi understanding of, you know, Germany, right? That they're the Germ they're superior and all the rest of it. You know, Americans, we believe that we're, you know. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So Yeah, I see I see the difference now. Okay. So like that kind of nationalism I don't I don't think is obviously is unhealthy. You know, like you know, you bomb somebody and you go, Marka, you know, it's that kind of thing. Right? Like Yeah. Oh, these guys, you see it now with the Israelis, man. Like, oh, they killed 27 of yours. So you guys are on like 14,000 KIA right now. You know, and, and it's four or 5,000 kids or some shit like that. But like that's nationalism, like the wrong, in the wrong duration will do that to you. It's like, oh, 27 of ours died. So we're going to kill 14,000 of yours. You know, like Trump just got up there and said, oh, if you spill an inch of America, a drop of American yeah, blood. We're going to spill a gallon of yeah. yours. Everybody's like, raw. Yeah. So, but this song is really interesting because, you know, first of all, it talks about nature. Um, the threat of night is now banished. The lark so wait, in the morning. Rome was seen... very nationalist. Oh, yeah. So the, the, the Romans the were absolutely nationalistic. The Greeks were nationalistic. Yeah. yeah. It's just human nature. It's just, it's just human ego, you know, in, in yeah. uh, multiply. Yeah. You know, so it's, it's like, you know, it is what it is. So the lark of the morning is singing in the brightness. The firm of itself was singing. The lightness of the morning shall defeat the powers of the night. The day shall come, O birthland. Like, there's a lot of things you can say if you if you got to win after going up against the big bad guy. Um, They didn't really come out and diss, like, Russia or whoever. 
They just said you banished slavery. Um, you did not yield under oppression. Like they didn't come out and say, man, fuck those people, blah, blah, blah. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just, hey, th- we've got a beautiful country. We've got beautiful people. Um, we've got stand up dudes and women that are going to stand up against oppression. You know, here we are. We're Finland. It wasn't it wasn't like disrespectful to their to their interlocutors. I think that that's, you know, that's one of the differences, I think, where you can have a positive form of nationalism. Like, in, from a biblical perspective, you still have nations, tribes, people. You still have divisions of people. Not in order to, to say human beings are not one or one people and that we're not ultimately one people, but to recognize... Shout out to Orion Rules. The the uniqueness of all of, of our of our cultures and how that's important. I mean, 100%. Even the Quran talks about it and says, you know, Allah didn't all make you one group of people. Mm-hmm. He made you different and you guys can have, you know, Yasser Khadi was talking about trying out different food and all the rest of it. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's a beautiful thing. I, I think agree. in 30,000 years, Kai's going to be, I totally agree. <laughs> Kai's gonna be teaching me shit about Finland, how we were back mm-hmm. in the older, in the, in the old world, you know, like, I, I, I think, I think it's a beautiful thing. I just, to me, the Nazi stuff, I just feel like the Western world has given way too much power to that imagery and that mentality. Like, I understand, like, Nazism is an example of nationalism going really bad. Yeah. That doesn't mean that all nationalism or all pride in your country and all pride in your race, like, it doesn't mean that all of that is bad just because there are bad versions of it. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like right. I'm proud. I'm proud of my descendants. I'm proud of my heritage. Like, and honestly, like knowing my heritage, knowing like, oh, like your your ancestors fought the British. Your ancestors were, you know, you guys had a lot of problems with. It gives me a lot of understanding about myself. It makes me like, oh, okay, so that's you know, like, this is this is part of my DNA at an epigenetic level. Like, oh, okay, nice that makes sense. But like, yeah, I, I just, I just, we should celebrate that shit. Like yeah. the, the, the solution to racism and oppression is celebration. That's the solution. That's what I was thinking. I was like, we're, I don't think that we need to, like, I think everybody should have like, you know, you can have a pride for where you come from, but you should, as long as you can still celebrate the other cultures. Like you said, like there's the food and the, the differences in dress and the Yeah, the but if we're all like, the same, if we're all the same, not to celebrate. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And when you got up and you got like hooked up with Jamaican culture and Jamaican food, like, mm-hmm. and, and, and like, that's a funny thing. Like, <laughs> I grew up with, you know, Jamaican cooking once in a while, you know, my mom is Jamaican, but subhanAllah, she's like so gifted. She's like just a culinary culinarily gifted honestly thank you and like she i enjoy it i actually she, very enjoy it. I she it. made the food the jamaican food better stuck for a lot than than jamaican people who were cooking their entire lives you know what i'm saying thank you so it's like at some point she's gonna like cook me a dish that's like jamaican Jama- yeah type you yeah. know a type dish that's gonna well, be well actually badass. that's funny because i added butternut squash cubes of it into the, the stew right hey kid of the rocks in the house but, hey what's up um, um the other thing too that's interesting is that like within the, each culture like okay so before i started like actually i got to cook with somebody who was jamaican and see how they do things right and she was saying i'm so bored with my cooking it's just all the same and i was like oh i hadn't really thought about that because i was thinking like when i was looking at like i want to learn jamaican cooking i'm like this is cuisine you know what i mean and then it's like every culture, that's all everybody knows if we can't reach out to each other. And I was like, I wonder, cause I was thinking, um, there was a there was a dish that I was like, man, I would love to, Thai. I freaking love Thai food yeah. and I cannot master it. Like I, I actually haven't put in any time since we've been together in Yeah, it. you have Cause you're not a Thai yeah, person. You, yeah, you, but anyway, like- You haven't even tried. Thai but my thought was- As far as like making yeah, it Yeah, no, I, not, not really, yeah. So the lady that, cooks it in our town she's friggin' like so good at it and i thought to myself what if i made a couple of my american dishes and i brought it to her and i was like taste this i'll teach you how to cook that you teach me your thing and how fun that would be to share cultures like that uh-huh uh-huh oh my gosh that must have been so fun <sighs> i was invited once to a nigerian wedding was the only white person there and the only monochrome <laughs> clothes <laughs> every single person wanted to feed me <laughs> there it was super- <laughs> 
that's what happened at uh, the first Ramadan or the first Eid after Ramadan with the Muslims. They were they just wouldn't let you leave the masjid, just stuffing you full of food. Food, food, food. Just food, 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 food the entire time. I ha- I went one time to a. I was invited to eat at someone's house, and they were well, they were Somali. But I don't know exactly where they were from. <laughs> but anyway, they, they invited us to dinner. And so we went over there. Guys, I am OCD, I believe. I, everything has to have like, you know, I don't don't touch my stuff, whatever. Anyway, they brought a whole bowl. Everything was in there. And like everybody had to dig with their hands and eat it. <laughs> la, la, and I was la, like, la. but to be honest with you, <laughs> at that point in my life, I was embarrassed. Like at the, anything embarrassed me. And so the idea of having to like dig into it and like dig your hands around and then stuff it in your face was very uncomfortable. People from the other apartments were coming down to watch me eat the food. (laughs) It was so freaking weird. (laughs) I felt so uncomfortable, but it was fun to experience. And we were like sitting on the floor on a carpet. Um, It was it was a unique experience and it was cool to just be able to be like for a moment introduced into somebody else's culture where they were open to loving you. It was a cool experience. Yeah, you look at Kai. We get a, we get like a decent amount of Europeans, which which I, you know, my my life has basically been in America and the Middle East. So like, like Europeans, mm-hmm. like I really don't know like the mindset, the mentality. Did you see somebody put in the comment section? They were like saying that we really need to go to Europe and spend some time there, and that it's going to actually like change our mindsets a lot. Actually, I, I think I, would I like to do I that. Think I actually agree. I do I think, too. I think I agree because like there are certain mindsets that Middle Easterners have that are that go right in line with American mind, especially like right wing Americanism. Mm-hmm. So like, yeah, no, I, I. Uh, I 1000% agree. I really like this song. I just like the uh, the uh, imagery of the people skiing and the. Because it's like. snow. Yeah, it's like. You could have had pictures of like, ah, we the fought, churches. we fought, we got ourselves our freedom, which is obviously important, but like, you're fighting for freedom so that people can go skiing without a problem. Like, mm-hmm. the entire reason you fight for freedom, and this is the entire reason you do all that, is because. You want people to do regular shit that they would do otherwise. That's the reason that you go to war. You know, like when hmm. if you have a pure, if you could have a pure motive for war. I like that. Um, all right. Obviously, I'm going to give this one a ten. You got to res- you got to respect it. You I agree. It's, I it's, agree. It's, it's ten. The, it's, ten it's, it's, well. a, it's cra- I keep saying it's a national anthem, but it can't. It's not. It can't be the national anthem. I can't. <laughs> All right, guys. Um, it we'll be should right be. Back, you guys. It should, yeah. Two is yeah I, I don't know a thing about Finland other than that it starts with an F. But I'm telling the entire country what their national anthem should be. I know the colors of blue and white. Maybe I'm, <laughs> maybe I'm qualified. All of us are finished tonight, dear listener. <laughs> We're gonna see you on the other side. Finn out. Sorry out. Gone. See you, Sarah. Look at you.